welcome to our very first online sci-fi science comedy debate. Um, uh, before we kick off, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land where we're holding sci-fi today. For me, that's the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. And I'd like to pay my respects to elders past and present and acknowledge any Aboriginal people who are joining us on the line tonight. Uh, we're very excited to be here as part of Science Gallery Melbourne's mental exhibition, um, which was supposed to open this week. I can't imagine why they, they didn't go ahead, but they will open soon. And uh, if you've not heard of mental, it's this fantastic exhibition that has over 20 experimental projects from local and international artists that reflect different perspectives on mental health, something that is very critical to all of us right now in our 37th week of lockdown. Um, please go along uh, to Science Gallery Melbourne uh, at the University of Melbourne when it does open and I'll share some details with you later. But before that, I do believe we actually have a video of mental exhibition for you to have a snapshot. So our wonderful tech, Daniel, is gonna kick off that video now. Thank you so much for that. It went so smoothly. Any manner of things could have gone wrong and, and didn't. So thank you for that. Um, welcome back. Uh, for the newly initiated who've never done, a, never been to a sci-fi science comedy debate before, um, basically what it is, it's a place where we bring together the sharpest minds in science and comedy and we make them debate very critical issues in a very silly way, mainly by attacking each other. Um, it's like a Wheeler Centre event uh, that got drunk and fell, fell down some stairs. That's how I like to describe it to people. Um, my name's Alanta. I'm your host and adjudicator tonight. Uh, it's my job to, to keep this whole thing tracking forwards vaguely in the same direction, like a cat herder doing the Oxfam trail walker with just as much misplaced optimism. Um, I'm very excited to have this sci-fi online. Um, it's great for all of those of you out there like myself who are in lockdown or if you're in isolation or quarantine uh, or if you just don't like other people very much this is also a perfect way to join us um, welcome so <laughs> in addition if you get bored at any moment during tonight's debate um, if the adrenaline of potential technical issues <laughs> isn't enough to entertain you um, you can play a guessing game of just how many of the debaters are wearing pants at any given time. Uh, it will not be 100%. Now, um, we do have the chat function going throughout the debate. You are welcome to post comments uh, in the chat, but just like our government uh, receiving the IPCC report, uh, there's a very good chance uh, that your comments will be robustly ignored. So keep that in mind. Um, now, tonight's topic is could not be more fitting for an online debate. It is, should we upload our brains to the cloud? Um, and as the gap between what a human brain and a computer can do shrinks, we must ask the question, why not combine forces? Uh, I mean, for most of us these days, uh, you know, we're already relying on technology, of the digital realm to tell us where we're supposed to be right now, how to get there, and whether to expect a dental exam or a pap smear on arrival. The good hope is not both. So why don't we fully commit to going entirely online? Um, you know, commu computers do a lot of things better than us. Uh, they can focus better than us. Very rarely has a computer been switched off for scrolling Twitter. Um, but as we increase our digital identity, have we overlooked the essence 
of what truly makes us ask, can a computer ever truly replicate the complex, flawed, random, magical inner world of human beings? For example, right now, I'm thinking about whether or not Indiana Jones ever took out travel insurance. You know, could a computer do that? Um, now, <laughs> to uh, convince us that, uh, yes, we should upload ourselves, our brain to the cloud, I would like to introduce the affirmative team for the, uh, the argument for computers. We have joining us Matt Coffey, Rosa Zwire, and Wade Kelly. You can just hear the cheers in those living rooms across Melbourne right now, affirmative. And for the negative team, we have, we have Lyndon Ashcroft, Angus Gordon, and Louisa Fitzharding. Yeah, silently waving, it's what we want. Uh, before we kick off with the debate, I will check in with each of the debaters. Um, we might start with you, Matt, if you can uh, unmute yourself. Um, are you there, Matt? G'day. <laughs> Welcome, this is your very first sci-fi, it's great to have you here. Would you describe yourself as tech savvy? Uh, kinda, kinda. I think it varies tech to tech. I uh -huh. think it varies, you know? I'm right on the cusp of uh, being in touch uh, with the youth. I think when it comes to apps, definitely out of it. TikTok, no way. Everything else, kind of alright. What's the most important tech in, the, in your life that keeps you going? That keeps me going? Uh, probably the phone. Probably the okay. phone. Got to have it on me all times. Good. Well, I hope tech is on your side tonight, Matt. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank I'm going to throw to Rosa. Welcome, Rosa. Are you there? Yeah. Hey. Uh, welcome back to Sci-Fi. Very lovely to have you. Wonderful to be here. Um, I'm in my bedroom. I love my bedroom. It's great. <laughs> it's all in the mind. Just imagine you're, you're somewhere else. Unless you want to be in yeah. you can be there if you want. Um, you're, you're younger than me, I'm going to uh, posit. Uh, do you have, what was your youngest memory of, of the cloud, of the internet? Can you cast your mind back? Golly. Um, uh, an early computing memory was like when we finally had like multiple computers in our house that could play Warcraft 2 together, like multiplayer. And I have very strong memories of that because I was pretty little, but my siblings were quite a bit older than me. And I just liked making um, like levels that looked really nice um, and not actually like winning the game. Um, I don't remember first memories of the internet, but my, my dad did computer things. So he was like all over it. Oh, that's lovely. And Warcraft is that hallmark of civilization that really brought us into, <laughs> into the world. Well, thank you for joining us, Rosa. We look forward to hearing more from you in a moment. I'm going to throw to you, Wade. Uh, what's the most, are you there, Wade? Yeah, I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm also looking at the chat, which is absolutely hilarious and delightful. And we've already decided that Rose's uh, flatmates have won the debate. Um, <laughs> so, you know, we'll do this. We'll go through this process for fun. But Rose's flatmates have already won the debate. And her older cousin con has confirmed it. So it's done. This is a level of audience interaction. I'm just not sure i'm on board with <laughs> 98 missed chats so far so that's that's terrifying no um, one look like this atlanta if all our brains were in the cloud it would just be so noisy so easy so noisy wade what's uh what's the technology that that best uh, enhances your life oh uh, uh um what was the rating on this one again? No, uh, I think I think probably these guys. Uh, I love my AirPods. They are just uh, the best. You know, if I had to give uh, one thing up, it would be the hardest one to give up. Uh, they're they're amazing. I love them. They're good. Do they get swall swallowed by small puppies a lot? Is that what happens? I mean, yeah, but their their digestive tracts are pretty quick, and right. so you just fish them out and clean them off. It's fine. No problem. The sound quality is. Incredible. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. We just got a puppy, <laughs> so fingers crossed. <laughs> well, uh, maybe you can report back to us uh, with the future with that one. Thank you so much for joining us, Wade. Thank you, um, I'm going to throw to the negative team now. Uh, Lyndon, as first speaker, hello. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. How are you, Atlanta? Good to see you. Uh, good to see you as well, Lyndon. Uh, now, as a, as a climate scientist, rough week for you, if, if not uh, every week. Um, but uh, a machine's better at predicting uh, weather and, and climate than humans? Who, who wins out? Well, you need both. If you just had the machines on their own, then uh, maybe they would, 
I don't think that would work so well. But actually, if you just had humans on their own, they wouldn't do that great a job either. I mean, we think we would, but we, we probably wouldn't. Don't tell the Bureau that I said that, but you'd probably need both, I think. I will not uh, dub on you to the Bureau. Um, maybe if machines are in charge, we would make some more sensible decisions about manufacturing. Who knows? Thank you for joining us, Lyndon. Uh, we'll throw to Angus, second speaker for the negative. Angus, are you there? Hello. Hi, Angus. Um, thank you for joining us. This is your first sci-fi as well. It's great to have you. True, true. fact. <laughs> That's what we do here. We love facts. Um, uh, now, do uh, as a comedian, do you find that computers help or harm comedy? Um, yeah, I love them. You can get memes, uh -huh. podcasts, videos of comedy. So much more comedy. Just all the comedy. What, what's the highest form of comedy that you can sort of access via a computer? Um, I don't know, probably like a picture of an animal who's friends with a different kind of animal. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty sweet. I, I think you've solved the internet there. And yeah. You can't do better than two different animals who are friends. Uh, I don't know if you can post pictures in the chat. I suspect you can't. <laughs> but uh, let's just all imagine our, our favourite paired of animals just hanging out having a wonderful time together thank you for joining us angus uh and i'm going to throw finally to louisa hello howdy howdy i uh, i wanted to ask you louisa uh, as a comedian and a grammar nerd mm. what are your feelings about online grammar software such as as grammarly oh i mean i feel it takes the fun away from the people like me who love being sub editors and going through your writing and fixing it up. Why would you take that joy away from a real life nerd who gets a huge amount of, of happiness um, from putting the apostrophes in the correct place? Um, so yeah, down with, down with Grammarly, but if they would like to sponsor my next show, that would be great. <laughs> I'm sure they're not in the chat uh, tonight. Thank you for joining us, Louisa. And um, you heard Louisa. Keep your spelling errors and your, your grammar mistakes in there and share your work with an out-of-work sub-editor today. That's great. Okay, before we kick off the debate, some quick rules that I wanted to share with you all. Um, tonight should be a civilised debate, so the debaters are requested to sling arguments, not personal attacks. Um, each debater has about eight minutes. If anyone does go longer than eight minutes, I will start playing the MIDI file of chopsticks that I created uh, in eighth grade. And um, it's, it's not good. So just putting that out there. Um, at the end of the debate, I will have a quick peek in the horrifying chat thread that's already created itself uh, and see if there is more comments suggesting that the affirmative or the negative of one. Um, I will vaguely use this to deduce the winner of the debate. Um, it won't, will not be a scientific process, I, I promise you that. Um, so enough from me to introduce our first speaker for the affirmative tonight. It is Matt Coffey. He is a mediator at the Science Gallery Melbourne. He's also a science student, an all-round nerd, whose cloud brain file size would be that of a high quality GIF, please, wherever you are, make some virtual noise for Matt Coffey. Thank you so much for having me, guys. Uh, yeah, my name's Matt. I'm 24. I've got a bright green headset. And my record for two minute, needle, two minute noodles is a lightning one minute, 48 seconds. You would not believe. I'm onto it. So the topic for this evening should we upload our brains to the cloud? Uh, yes, definitely. It's a no brainer. Okay. But before my big brain teammates and myself, uh, tell you why let's get some context. So what is a cloud in meteorology? A cloud is an aerosol consisting of minute liquid droplets, frozen crystals, and other particles suspended in the atmosphere. <laughs> lame in computer science the cloud is a data storage location consisting of half finished work documents 700 pictures of that cute animal you saw that one time and an mp3 version of toxic by britney spears all of which are suspended in a parallel dimension that that's pretty cool that's pretty nifty stuff 
People tell me all the time to get my head out of the clouds. I reckon it's time for me to get my head in the cloud. So what is a brain? Now I'm a young adult male. Okay. This thing, a brain, I'd never heard of it. Right. So I had to look it up. And, uh, according to, I don't know if you can see that the Britannica of brains, uh, that I have purchased uh, specifically for this event. Uh, it is this, okay. It is a squishy wrinkly mass rolling around in your head. It's gray, but also red. This was written by Dr. Seuss, I should mention. Uh, it's also responsible for remembering things, but also for forgetting them, and does what you want it to, but not always, and does most of its thinking when you're trying to sleep, because screw you, I guess. Right. That's the brain. Uh, now, I don't want to sound too nitpicky, but that slimy sea creature rolling around in our head sounds like the weakest link, really. There's some stuff going on there. That's a problem. What's with all the ambiguity? What's with the weird priorities? Why is it that when I'm on a date, I suddenly remember that time that, or all the times that I said you too to a waiter or, or a flight attendant when they asked me to enjoy my service, you know? Or that time that I farted in front of a girl in grade nine and I told her it wasn't me, even though it was just us two at the bus stop. Look, Madison, if you're watching this, I'm really sorry, okay, for stanking it up at the bus stop. I was really nervous. Okay, I'm, I'm really sorry if you're out there. Anyway, what was I talking about? Oh, right, brains and clouds. You see how I got sidetracked there? Maybe having my brain in the cloud could have prevented that confession of my childhood flatulence-related lack of self-esteem, okay? There's so much to be gained from having our brain in the cloud. We all like to get out and do things, right? Especially when we're able to. Uh, and just think about all the things that we miss out on in our local community uh, because we don't hear about them. We don't know about them. And you know, that word of mouth kind of, kind of thing that we miss out on. But if our brains were a little bit more connected, it would be easier for us to connect as people, especially in our in our local community. I'll give you an example, right? So I was online the other day and I found something out and it honestly changed my life. You would not believe just how many sexy singles there are in my area. Like, and they all want to chat to me. I, I never would have known unless I had gone online to this, to this digital cyberspace. I, I never would have found that out. It's those kinds of really important and life-changing bits of knowledge that are made more accessible by having our brain in the cloud. Now, the opposition might say, bah, being out there in the cloud just makes things more dangerous. Meeting up with sexy singles in cyberspace, too risky. And to that, I say, nay, it is only dangerous without the proper protection. And look, I'll be the first to admit, the last thing you want to do is to have a great night out in some data center somewhere with a cute person or really cute Intel processor and wind up catching some malware. God forbid a Trojan. All right. Let's not even, let's not even go there. That's why you always got to take a firewall with you before going out. All right. There are always contingencies, always things to help. You know, but I'm looking at some of you guys out there. Don't be getting terabyte size unless that's what you need. All right. You're not fooling anyone. Okay. Just keep it real. Now, I want to touch on something that's really, really close to my heart. Okay. My brain looks like a chicken breast. Like it is smoother than Frank Sinatra sliding down a mountain made of butter. I have always dreamed of being of average intelligence, you know. And if I had a cloud brain, I could make that dream a reality. Molecular biology, easy peasy. Rocket science, well now I rock at science, right? Australian politics, oh look, even then I'm kind of doubtful to be honest, but there's always hope. There is always hope. Point is, I can go from Schmeagel to some kind of human form of Google right? But you might be thinking, Matt, I know you, buddy. All right. You have the attention span of a puppy. And I would 
vehemently disagree with you, okay? My attention span is more like that of a slab of concrete, virtually non-existent, you know? But this is the old mat that we're talking about. It wouldn't take me all that time to learn all of these things because the new mat, his brain is in a cloud. Okay, I can learn these things so much faster. I can learn faster. I can learn these things in parallel. Uh, and speaking of time, you know, my brain in the cloud, you know, living on a data center would be untouched by the hands of time. I'm talking about real immortality, you know, living forever. And I know forever is a really long time, but how else could you ever get a get around to watching every episode of Neighbours, right? Full disclosure, I wrote that bit as a joke, but I'm genuinely concerned about how many episodes there are. There are 8,650 of them. That's almost more times than I've cried in the shower. Almost. It, it's pretty close. They, they're kind of like head to head going for the win. I definitely wouldn't feel so strongly about how many episodes are in that show if my life was infinite. Imagine all the possibilities. We could be anything. We could do anything. Albert Einstein once asked, and I quote, why doesn't the glue stick to the inside of the bottle? I mean, that's kind of weird. Like if the glue out of the bottle sticks to everything else, why doesn't it stick to the inside of the bottle? I don't get it. End quote. And you know, he's kind of right. If you think about it, like that is kind of weird. And maybe if he had a cloud brain, a super smart cloud brain, he could have figured out the answer to that. And that none of us would be left wondering as to the answer of that question. I rest my case. Back to you in the studio, Atlanta. Well done. Uh, round of applause, Matt. Uh, I'm just after the 8,000, was it? 650 episodes of Neighbours and then the discussion about immortality. I, I don't know if the two of those belong together. Um, yes, and we'll go forward from there. Thank you so much, Matt Coffey. Uh, before we go to our next speaker, I will very quickly share with you all uh, the science news of the week. Um, the story that came out this week was about astronauts uh, at the International Space Station will soon be receiving a very unusual guest uh, known as the Blob, uh, which sets off into orbit next Tuesday. So it's something to look forward to. Physarum polycephalum uh, has long fascinated scientists as a slime mold. It is a unclassifiable organism. It, it's neither plant, animal or fungus. And it's actually a single cell which uh, with, it has multiple nuclei and it just grows without ever dividing um, as a yellow spongy mass. And it, it lacks a mouth or a brain, which does make it a perfect candidate for the Nationals Party. Uh, it first appeared on Earth around 500 million years ago and it, it's done very little since. Um, but it is curious as to why the scientists are sending the slime mold into space. When they were asked directly, they just sort of refused to make eye contact and shuffled some papers before admitting that it really just creeped them out and they didn't want it in a lab anymore. They will be sending it into space with various other unsavory items, including a box set of Woody Allen DVDs, several fax machines and two billionaires. So that is the, uh, that is the science news of the week. Uh, to our next speaker, who no one wants to send into space just yet, unless, uh, unless she very much wants to go, uh, Lyndon Ashcroft is a lecturer and a science communicator at the University of Melbourne. She spends half her time teaching students about the wonders of our weather, half the time helping research students improve their communication skills so their work can change the world, and half her time doing research on Australia's climate history. We're all very glad that Lyndon does not teach maths. This is her first debate uh, that has not been with a friend's dad at a birthday party. Please make her very welcome, Lyndon Ashcroft. Thanks, Atlanta. Thank you for having me and for um, providing that lovely description of my pet that just got sent up into space. Was a cat, is now a blob after just sitting on the couch for so long. Now, before I get started, 
on what I believe is quite a convincing argument as to why we should be not uploading our brains to the cloud. I just have a couple of points of clarification there that I wanted to touch on with Matt's green-eared reading of the dictionary that we just listened to. First of all, um, clouds aren't lame. They're freaking amazing. Thank you. I won't hear any anything negative about water droplets, ice droplets, you know, amazing things that can be lots of different colours, lots of different shapes, and can make lots of people think that UFOs exist. So, you know, I won't hear that. Thank you. And just because Matt's chicken brain is full of farts, it doesn't mean that yours is. And the negative team and I are here tonight because we don't want your cognition and your existence lost in the depths of some obscure Tinder. Matt talked about having access to all of the information in the world if our minds were uploaded to the cloud. But like, we've had that for a while, guys. And what have we done with it? I just watched that video of that kid saying fucking goat like 10 times in a row. Um, and then I just looked up how to convert ounces to milligrams. Like, I, that's all I do. That's all I do with the internet all the time. So we've had this and we, we don't use it like that. So I'd like to talk about something different. But first of all, I have to admit that I don't know anything about the brain. Not only did I stop studying biology and psychology in year nine, but I am an overworked parent of a teething one-year-old who you will almost definitely hear crying in the next room. My poor brain, if she did function, she does not function anymore. Certainly not in lockdown number six, which in our house is being brought to us by five packets of Tin Tans a week. And not even the good ones, like the crappy raspberry ones that I bought by mistake because they were on special. But what I lack in knowledge about brains, I make up for in my knowledge about clouds. And just like their virtual counterpart, these seemingly innocuous and omnipresent creatures are really, actually, whatever Matt has to tell you in his fake dictionary, they're actually dangerous powerhouses. Did you know that an average cumulus cloud, that's your white fluffy one like the one behind me, has as much water vapour in it, the weight of the water vapour is about the same as 80 elephants. Imagine that, just dropping on your head. The winds inside, the towering cumulonimbus cloud that brings our storms, brings our thunder and lightning, those winds are strong enough to break a jet. Break a jet clean in half. And did you know that clouds are present at almost all natural weather disasters? Is that a coincidence? I don't think so. Don't go messing with clouds, that's my moral. And just like the virtual cloud, we think that we understand our physical clouds, but we freaking don't. We freaking don't, okay? This week, the IPCC, as Atlanta said, released their latest assessment report. None of the 3,900 pages in that report have any material that is worthy of a science comedy debate, unless you guys want that kind of laughter that then really quickly turns into crying and then you get really salty ice cream in your two litres of ice cream that you're eating every day. We're all pretty familiar with those tears right now. The report talks about the past, right? It talks about how temperatures are higher now than at any time in the last 125,000 years. And the report talks about how uh, carbon dioxide levels are higher than at any time in the last two million years. That the Earth's in a whole lot of trouble and it's all our faults and we really have to do something about it. I'll pause for a second now, if you like, if you want to just go and empty out those tears from your ice cream. Everybody okay? All right. But the report also talks about the future and how it could look. Obviously, climate scientists are intelligent, sexy, amazing creatures, but we're not miracle workers. We know heaps, but we can't say for certain exactly what this day is going to look like in 60 years and exactly what the future will hold. Just like a COVID positive removalist from Sydney, the future can take a lot of different paths. Topical. The reason I'm telling you this is because there are two main sources of this uncertainty. The first one is humans. We're the obvious wild card, the biggest source of un unknowables, unknown, whether the graphs are going to go up like this, up like this, up like this, or maybe if we're really lucky, up and then down again. So what are we going to do? Are we actually going to do it? Or are we going to do it quickly enough? Now, you know by it, I mean, get rid of this rubbish government and crack on with becoming a powerhouse of renewable energy and saving the planet. But when and how that's going to happen is a real source of, uh, of wiggles and grey room in the graphs that we're seeing. But the second source of uncertainty, that's right, 
It's freaking clouds. Those ephemeral jerks, they're floating up there right now, mocking us with their ability to travel more than five kilometers. We still don't know heaps about what they're going to do in the future. We don't know how they're going to form. What part of them are we made out of water? What part are we made out of ice? Are there going to be more of them closer to the ground? And so they will keep in more heat. Are they going to be more higher up in the atmosphere? So they'll bounce back some of the, Earth's, uh, the sun's energy from the earth and maybe cool us down. Are they going to stay in the same place or are they going to move around? Are they going to rain more? Are they going to rain less? There's so much that we don't know. We just don't know. Even with the help of all the fancy computers that the, pos the, the positive team are going to keep talking about. So my wonderful tracksuit pant wearing audience, I ask you, would you really trust what is left of your brain after what's even remotely left after 18 months of sitting on the couch and eating bad sourdough? Would you trust what is left of your consciousness with a human made cloud? These two sources of unknowing, these two sources of uncertainty, are you going to trust those two things mush together with your very existence just because it makes it marginally easier to order pizza on your phone? No way. Not for me. No, thank you very much. To me, deciding to leave our brains to the cloud in some Zuckerberg-developed Zuckerberg -developed universe is not only dangerous, but it's defeatist. I think that if we commit our brains into the virtual world, it'll mean checking out of this one, this very one that we're all so desperate to get out into right now. I don't know about you, but apart from the 60 hours that I was in labour and what a break that was, um, I've been living in a largely virtual world for the past year and a half. And look, it's great to see you in any form that I can get. Welcome to my house. It's lovely to have you here. My brain feels as if I've just created about 50 different horcruxes. It has been so splintered and frayed and fractured and my soul and sanity has been sheared from my body thanks to all the Zooming and teaming and Googling and slacking. Oh, why? Why would we want more of this? Why would we choose this? Wouldn't you rather choose to be in a, a real world? Wouldn't you rather choose to have less screen time and, and more green time? Wouldn't you rather embrace the beautiful world that already exists rather than live in some augmented version where the Tim Tams are probably all raspberry flavoured or you can't even taste the Tim Tams at all? Why would you want to be there? <laughs> Why would you want to be there? Uploading our minds to the cloud, in my mind, means giving up on the physical world we have, the one physical world that we've got. Uploading our brains to a fallible, unreliable human-made cloud was going to give us a sense that we're safe, no matter what happens to the planet, and that we don't need to rush into action. And I think we all know that nothing could be further from the truth. Now, I'm not saying that my opponents are in favour of climate change, but I'm not saying they're not in favour of climate change. So if you care about your planet, vote for us. I think we need to be here on this earth, fighting rather than giving up. We need to keep our brains right here, not up there. We don't need to upload our brains to the cloud. We need to keep our heads in the clouds. Thank you. Round of applause for Lyndon Ashcroft. I am starting to get um, a cumulative picture of the mental health of our debaters tonight and it's it's not it's not looking good i've got to be honest um, it's pronounced cumulus uh, Atlanta. Oh, no. uh, i do deduct points for puns i just want to, do want to be clear about that right now those of that was not in the rules Atlanta. <laughs> it's a universal rule everyone knows that in that case i'm going to need to rewrite my whole speech so <laughs> i'll uh, see you guys so a quick break we'll see everyone in about an hour i guess <laughs> Oh dear. It's actually quite nice. Uh, normally in sci-fi, it's only get to look at the back of a debater's head while they're debating. So I'm actually really enjoying seeing faces. It's not a joke. It's just a fact. Um, thank you, Lyndon. That was great. Um, very quickly in some more science news before we go uh, back to the other team. Um, a report was released this week that uh, apes have been observed starting and ending interactions just like humans do. So that's good news. <laughs> 
um, the scientific team analyzed 1,242 interactions between bonobos and chimpanzees, not between the, in groups, uh, finding that apes would frequently gaze and use signals to initiate and or end exchanges. Um, and humans are shocked, have been shocked this week to learn that we're not the only species who partake in social niceties, raising questions about whether the chimps also make inane small talk about the weather, the local football team, or the declining quality of bananas. Um, the apes opening gestures do include touching each other, holding hands or butting heads, which scientists do say definitely does get someone's attention, but shouldn't be attempted with strangers at the local supermarket. Um, they did also find, which I found interesting, was that the more, the, the closer that the chimps actually were to each other socially, the shorter the lengths of their exchanges were, uh, or they just didn't even bother with the social niceties. So if a chimp is rude to you, know that it means that he considers you a close personal friend. And now a close personal friend of mine is our next debater, Rosa is a real human person who is not commercially affiliated with any tech companies offering consciousness upload services, which is a very weird way to introduce yourself, Rosa. Uh, the lady doth protest too much. Um, mostly, Rosa uses her very much in her body brain to make creative educational experiences. She dreams of a future where maths isn't a dirty word, but promises not to make it happen with a brain software update. She currently works at Science Works, where she occasionally makes small children cry by squashing liquid nitrogen cooled rubber ducks. But she tells us it is all for science. Please welcome to the stage. It is Rosa Zwire. Hey, everyone. Uh, this is weird. How weird is this? Um, I can't, I'm not getting anything from the audience. Um, luckily, I planned for this. And what I've got is a video of an audience laughing hysterically that's just playing on my screen the whole time. So I think you guys think I'm hilarious and I'm doing a really good job nailing it. I can see you guys loved that one. Um, I also might have my housemates listening in another room. Give me a yell if you're listening, housemates. They're not listening. Can't hear anything. It's fine. It's fine. I don't need any encouragement. Um, Thank you all to, to, to Matt for opening us up, uh, to Lyndon for your amazing words just there. Um, I just wanted to point out that um, in Lyndon's speech, she actually just mentioned that uh, her brain is actually not functioning very well at the moment. So I'm just not sure if that's like the, the best way to encourage people to agree with your perspective. If <laughs> your brain's not functioning that well. Um, my brain is functioning great. So just for, for some audience confidence, going well. Um, I also have moderate knowledge of brains and clouds. So I think I'm, I'm well placed to kind of fill in a bit of that, that knowledge there. Um, we will be addressing a bunch of the points that Lyndon has brought up. I'm going to leave some of that to Wade, who will be talking about it. But um, you, you have this idea that um, we we don't know everything about clouds they're very very confusing things but i'll uh, i'll come back to that in a minute and this other idea that we're giving up on the physical world but we are not proposing giving up on the physical world at all as you'll see uh in my talk so when we're talking about uploading our brains to the cloud so like i'm thinking about this like our devices so we have um we have phones and computers and things like that and that's the hardware and then there's the software, the data, and that is what um, goes up onto the cloud, but we still access it um, through all these different devices. So what's cool about that? Well, there are lots of things that are cool about that. One is that I don't need any particular one device to be able to access that stuff. It's just around and I can access it from lots of different places. Um, so I, I was actually thinking about this and I was like, this is amazing, right? Because we can upload our brains to the cloud but we can also download our brains into other bodies because our bodies are like the devices. So we can actually download into other bodies and experience what it would be like to be in a different body. Have a think about this for a second, because this is awesome. And um, has anyone here, uh, quiet audience, uh, I'm sure many of you here have wanted to experience what it would be like to be in a different body. 
So um, me, classically, uh, as you do when you have an upcoming talk you need to give, I spent uh, some time in the middle of the night lying in bed awake thinking about this. And I was like, what would I actually do if I could download my brain into another body? There are so many possibilities. And this is what popped into my head and I, I stand by it. Um, I reckon I would just download my brain into the body of a dog. This would be so good. Like dogs, they get cats all the time. They hang out in the sunshine. They roll around in the grass. Um, they get cuddles. No one asks them to do tax returns. Um, it's a really, really good time being a dog, I think. And I think that uh, I think that, that is a pretty good reason to be able to upload your brain into the cloud and download into a dog. And then, so I would be this dog, but then I realized I would actually be the only dog that has like a pure mathematics degree, which would be so cool. Imagine being a dog that could also do maths. And then what I'd do is I'd get like an Instagram account and people would follow it, first of all, because people follow Instagram accounts of dogs because they're really cute. But imagine if there was this dog that could do like pure maths, I would get such a big following and I would be able to like secretly and insidiously educate people in maths and why it's cool and interesting through the body of a dog. Then I'd be able to make maths really cool and the whole world would just be better because maths would be cool and popular and everyone would love it because my dog maths Instagram account. Um, this led me down a bit of a Googling rabbit hole because I started Googling dogs that do math um, and ended up watching a BBC documentary about this dog that does maths with primary school kids. Actually quite good at arithmetic. I was very impressed. The next video that came up on YouTube was, is Maggie the math dog a fraud? And quite frankly, I didn't want to know the answer, so I didn't watch that video. Um, but downloading into other bodies, this means that we can basically teleport. So we can travel around the world, the physical world, without having to fly anywhere. It works. We can download into a body on the other side of the world, which would be absolutely awesome. We could have this like big game of musical brains, you know, where we like swap, swap bodies, um, maybe not with like one body being removed and a person being stuck up there in the cloud, like in musical chairs. Although maybe, I mean, according to Wade, maybe that will be a great idea. I don't know. Um, so uh, is anyone here a fan of COVID? Have we got any fans of COVID in the audience? Just give me a yell. No, seems, seems pretty quiet. Well, we could do a lot to get rid of COVID if we could do this thing because we could visit family and friends without having to move. So lockdown would be much, much easier. We could stop our bodies from physically intermingling um, and just get rid of this virus once and for all. Um, Lyndon, you know what else we could do? We could study clouds so well because one of the big problems with studying phenomena in nature is that you can't see where they are and like catch them at the right times. But if all of our brains were in the cloud, then someone could just send you a notification saying, there's this crazy cloud right here, right now. You download into their body, study the cloud. We would further the knowledge about clouds so much. Um, and uh, I think that, yeah, that would be great. Um, so, Another major benefit of this is um, not only could I put my brain into other people's bodies, but other people could put their brains into my body. This is good because I don't know about you folks, but I don't like to exercise. Um, not a big fan. Recognize it's very good for my body. I should be doing it, but I don't love to. But there are people out there who love exercising. I could get someone to work out my body for me. They could download into my body and do, do the workout for me. And then when I download back into my body, my body's just like super fit and I could just pay them or like, I don't know, like clean their toilets or something. I don't know. I could, I could exchange, like we could do an exchange. Um, so this possibility of jumping bodies um, also has, you know, some interesting possibilities for sex. I'm not going to elaborate on them. I'm just going to give you folks a few seconds for your weird brains to work out what that one, if you want. Yep. Um, 
The other thing we're going to be able to do is one day we're going to be able to download into robot bodies. Now, this is terrifying, right? Terrifying? Are you, are you terrified? You should be. But I read an inspirational quote on the internet and the, the quote said, do the thing you fear and keep on doing it. We all know that you should listen to motivational quotes on the internet. So clearly um, downloading our brains into robot bodies is a good idea. So another benefit of cloud software is this ability to do backups, to do version control, to have multiple people editing and viewing the same documents at once. You know the Office 365 suite that you've all used for the last year and a half since we had a global pandemic. Um, so one thing that I love about this is that we're going to be able to track changes on our brains. So upload your brain, see how it changes over time with multiple versions and you can compare those versions. And this is great because humans are self-obsessed. We love knowing about ourselves and understanding how we work. And if you could track changes on your brain, I'm sure you would. Um, the other thing we can do is you can restore to a previous version, right? So like you take an update of your brain and then some things happen and you're not happy with the effects it ha has on your brain. You can go back and just restore to a previous version. You've got version control. Um, suggested changes and recommendations. So obviously you don't want to give many people editing access to your brain, but um, you could potentially invite a psychologist to review, review your brain, make some little comments, maybe some suggested changes there. Um, but yeah, you want to keep that editing control probably pretty, pretty tight. Um, two very, very small side points is that one is that we're going to be able to solve the greatest mystery on earth, the mystery of deja vu, see what happened in the brain when, when that happens, which I'm excited about. Um, and we'll be able to remember our dreams, which is just like a side, side fun thing as well that I'm excited about. Um, now, for my final point, I, I just want to point out how much better this debate could actually be if, uh, if we uploaded our brains to the cloud. So what I could do is I could go to the uploads of the funniest saved brains on earth and I could run the topic through those brains and see what jokes they generate and then use those jokes in this debate. Um, I could also run simulated audience testing on all of your brains so you could upload a version. I run some jokes through, we iterate a little bit and then when we do the actual debate, it's just super duper funny. Um, so in conclusion, uh, if you don't actually think that we've been that funny or made very compelling points, then you should vote that we should upload our brains to the cloud because if we did, then our points would be better and our debate would be funnier. That's all from me. Thanks. Round of applause wherever you are, Rosa Zwire. The single most compelling argument uh, in human form for ethics committees on every planet, every part of the planet. Um, that was utterly terrifying, Rosa. Thank you for your absolutely uh, crazy and terrifying picture of what could potentially await us in the future. Whew, I was genuinely getting stressed uh, as you kept rattling off more and more ways we could uh, upload and download brains and edit them. Terrifying stuff. All right, I'm <laughs> going to throw it to our next speaker. It is uh, our second negative debater. The night it is Angus Gordon. He is the winner of the Best Newcomer in 2017 of the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. He was also the winner in 2015 of Raw Comedy. Uh, he's been accused of whimsical nihilism, of deadpan comedy, and his shows include flashes of horror, surrealism, tragedy, um, which he uh, is described as treating with wonderfully flippant apathy. Ultimately, it seems unlikely Angus will be offered a role on Play School. Without further ado, please make some noise wherever you are for Angus Gordon. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, oh my God, what happened? <laughs> I'm actually very nervous to do this because I think I'm the only person on tonight who um, doesn't have a university degree. Like I've got a Cert 3 in hospitality, brackets cleaning, close brackets. I think someone was saying how COVID's really bad. I actually love it. It's really good for the cleaning industry. It's actually heaps more cleaning to do. So I don't know. <laughs> um, Rosa was saying that uh, she thinks that uploading your brain to the cloud will uh, make sex better. 
or something. I don't, I don't know. So I feel like it's pretty optimistic. You know what I mean? Because I don't, I don't even really like sex now as it is. I think it's pretty gross. But it could always be like a lot worse. You know what I mean? It could be a lot grosser. Like instead of having one sperm, you could have like you know, instead of having like millions of little sperms, you could have one really big one. You know, like it wriggles out like an eel. Instead of a condom, they give you like a net and a harpoon. You've got to go fishing. Yeah, it's gross. I hate it. I hate it. I'm haunted by that idea. All right. Um, I've cheated a little bit. I did a PowerPoint. I don't, I don't know, man. I didn't know anything. I got really confused about what this de debate was about. So I'm very embarrassed now. We should not upload our minds to the cloud by Angus Gordon. <laughs> Clouds are water in a gas state. Brains are a wet solid. Brains and clouds do not mix. So that's, uh, that's our brain, the watermelon. Uh, that's the ground, the hammer, and the guy swinging it, that's gravity. No good, brother. I don't even think this is up for debate. I will not debate with anyone who wants to put my brain in a cloud. You're watching this, I've been captured by the computers. They're using a deep fake of my image to deliberately throw this debate. It is important that we do not go back on human forms. Whoa, I don't know how that got in there. All right, little joke. Now, uh, if you're referring to the cloud as a network computing facilities providing remote data storage and processing services via the internet, then it was also a bad idea. Time for the serious comedy debating. Um, like I said, I'm a, I'm a comedian. Like, I don't know anything. You know what I mean? I, I don't have a degree. I don't know anything about clouds. I don't know anything about brains. I don't know anything about computers. But like all comedians, I will not let that stop me from presenting very dangerous misinformation. Um, I did a like a tiny bit of research for this. And uh, according to the French neuroscientist, Nicolas P. Rougeau, Minds have evolved to control bodies. Like you can't have a mind without a body. Like it doesn't work in the long run. So that's like a body without a mind. This will not keep going. <laughs> Scientists tried this experiment during the French Revolution. See that guy? He... History of French neuroscience. Very interesting. Um, this meant like our bodies are mainly about, uh, our minds are mainly about processing senses, uh, sensory information. And within days of no longer being able to um, have any sensory information, like people no longer are able to produce coherent thought and they experience auditory and sensory hallucinations. That's Joe Rogan in the, the, the tank, the isolation tank. That's how you get the podcast. That's the good stuff. We need to have our minds connected to the outside world, but no man is an island. An island is land surrounded by water. This is a man surrounded by water, still not an island. I don't wanna go into that, it's actually too gross. Um, Rosa was saying earlier that um, like you can download our bodies. That's not the debate. The debate is can we upload the bodies? There's no downloading, that's outside the parameters of the debate. So most of my talk is about how uh, it would be no good to be on the internet all the time. I think we can all agree that the internet is uh, not good. It is gross. It is yuck. Um, it spreads like Trump, anti-vaxxers, far-right conspiracies. Lockdowns that we're all in at the moment are being extended now because people are being dickheads on the internet. We're all on the internet constantly now. And because it's bad, we want to get outside and people spread misinformation on the internet that leads people to having to spend longer inside on the internet. I'm not saying that the internet is the real virus. That's COVID-19 but the internet is not good. There's the, there's the internet, that's the internet. Uh, if we were uploaded to the internet, cyberbullying would get a lot worse. I think that's self-explanatory. You know, in the past you could get off the internet. As an aside, I haven't watched that recent documentary about Britney Spears, but I think this guy was right. Everyone made fun of him, but we, we should have left Britney alone. She was, she, she's been controlled. Uh, everything is on the internet is recorded forever. Um, Matt was saying that he farted in front of a girl on the bus stop and now he keeps remembering that. 
No, I just forget my whole life. I don't remember anything I've ever done. That's the easiest way to get through. If you're on the internet, then it's already recorded. If you're me, I just forget. I don't have to. People say it's better to forgive than forget, but it's actually a lot easier to just forget than forgive. Uh, the internet gives people really bad like body image. You know what I mean? Like it's really bad. You look at social media too much and like, you know, you just feel like you don't like live up to the people you see on Instagram. But the thing is the pictures aren't real. They've been photoshopped, autocorrected, spell checked. And like when you're all on the internet, you're going to feel even worse when you don't even have a body to compare yourself to. You know what I mean? And neither will they. They don't have a body either. Like the whole thing's fake. Also, when I Googled uh, image of human woman for that last slide, these were the top two results that came up. Like that's not a human woman. It's happening now. AI is taking over. It's too late. This debate doesn't matter. It's too late. It's happening. It's, it's going on. Also, like people don't want to talk about, oh, another thing that will suck on the internet when you're on the internet all the time is, you know, when your friend texts you like a meme and you don't really want to respond to the meme, but like if you're on the internet, what are you going to say? Like I've been busy in the physical world doing other things. They know. They know that you're just checking your phone. The only thing worse is going to be when you send something to them and you know you've just been left on red. Like that's going to suck. Also, if you're uploaded to the internet, you're vulnerable to hackers. You know, not all hackers are heroes like Julian Assange. Some of them are also alleged sex criminals like Julian Assange. <laughs> oh my God. Once your mind is hacked, your identity can be stolen, your personal information sold to the highest bidder. You can be transported into a puppet for one of those spam Facebook sunglasses viruses. Remember them? Or you'll be able to talk about to your friends it's like this great deal you got on designer sunglasses and your friends are like, I'm a mind in the cloud. I don't need sunglasses. I don't have eyes, a nose or an ears or as I call them, the holy trinity of face sunglass architecture. And then you're going to be like, oh, it's like an NFT thing. You know what I mean? Like it's an NFT thing. And they're like, what's an NFT? And then you've got to explain like, it's this technology is powered by the blockchain. And now you're even more annoying when you were just a virus trying to sell sunglasses to people. Um, and finally, even the thing that people think is good about the internet, I think is bad. Like people love pictures of cute cats and dogs. That's actually very triggering for me. Like, because I got a dog during lockdown for my anxiety, right? But get this, my dog, he doesn't give me any respect at all. I get no respect from this dog. But get this, my dog, he bit me. And then I tried to go to the doctor and complain. And the doctor wanted to have me put down. Uh, just joking, obviously. They put the dog down. Um, I felt so bad, though. Felt really bad. Like, the doctor, he gave me a second dog. And this dog, like, he doesn't respect me at all. Like, even less respect than the last dog. Like, get this, this, this second dog... He started putting peanut butter on his balls. Like, I'm not going to fall for that again. You know what I mean? Smooth. Yuck. I'm a crunchy fan. All right. In conclusion, um, just accept death. It's going to happen. Like, your brain... People to also, this debate, I don't know, like, I read a few articles. I read, like, a bunch of articles for this. And then half the articles are like, this can't happen. This will never happen. It's impossible for this to happen. Like, we could just debate anything. We could be like, should we put our brains in the blender so we can live forever? Like, it's point. Outside, it doesn't matter. Just you're going to die, accept death. You know, the skull is the best place for the brain. It's the best. It's, it's Lindy. It's trad. It's traditional. It's going to crack. Your brain's going to rot. But um, that's going to happen to everyone. And life is about learning to deal with that. Thanks very much, everyone. Have a beautiful evening. And I hope we've furthered the cause of science. <laughs> Round of applause wherever you are for Angus Gordon. Oh dear. Um, if, you, if you're not enjoying tonight, um, please do come back to our next sci fight. Uh, should we put our brains in, in a blender? That's a topic that we will be exploring. So uh, tune in for that one. We are up to our final speaker for the affirmative team, which may make you happy or sad, or you may have absolutely no opinion about that. Uh, let me introduce Wade Kelly. Uh, Dr. Wade Kelly's passion is helping other people share their passions. Um, he is nerd boss for Nerd Night Melbourne, an excellent night that you should get along to when you're not here with us right now. Uh, he helps academics mobilize their research into practice to generate an impact and make a difference in the world. The hope is it's a positive difference. Uh, he loves storytelling old typewriters, a good kitchen knife, and board games only complicated enough to pair with wine. When he's not dreaming of visiting his family in Canada, you can find him complaining about not getting to see his family in Canada. 
on Twitter, wherever you are, make some noise for Wade Kelly. Thank you so much, Alanta. Thank you so much for all the other speakers as well thus far. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, some of the chat I'm very much enjoying, but I'm going to be blocking that uh, while I talk for the next little bit. Uh, Angus, uh, you said that you want sex to be a little less gross. Just imagine for a second if there were no moving parts. I think you would love it. I mean, the internet, it's not a person punching a horse. That really happened. That didn't happen on the internet. That happened in real life. If we uploaded our brains to the cloud, we couldn't punch horses. And Angus, sorry, but if you don't like the topic, uh, that's not an argument for <laughs> the debate. I don't like the topic. Uh, just to be clear, we were told there were no videos or presentations. So just imagine if we'd uploaded our brains to the cloud, everyone would have gotten the same set of rules and the debate would be fair. <laughs> now, Lyndon brought up the IPCC report, uh, 3,900 pages in that report. Uh, she said that there was nothing in it worthy of a comedy debate. Well, as Charlie Chaplin probably didn't say, we most laugh in the face of our helplessness against the force of nature or go insane. So if we can't laugh about climate change, at least at some level, we've already lost. And the affirmative team is not interested in losing. Atlanta describes Rose's talk as utterly terrifying. Well, strap in. The IPCC report came out just a few days ago, and it says that we have until 2030 to turn the climate ship around. But like a child with a cast and a sheet of ice, you know it's not going to end well. The future is constrained by limited resources. We all know this. But we watch the Great Barrier Reef being bleached and bushfires killing a billion native animals. And then the government invests in coal, like they do. It's like we're all in a disaster movie where the town sheriff refuses to acknowledge the gigantic spider eating all the cattle. Like we can all see it. Uh, too many just choose not to acknowledge it. So natural disasters, they're, they're increasing in frequency at an alarming rate. But we're like goldfish. Well, we're not like goldfish. Goldfish have longer memories than we seem to. Our survival is not, as billionaires like to tell us, in the stars or on Mars. The future, my friends, and I did practice that part, <laughs> is on silicone. Your brain, my brains, all of our brains will be preserved forever on silicone. This is the way to save the earth and reverse the effects of climate change by getting rid of humans. So this is sci-fi, so I did some math or maths for the Australians in the audience. Uh, the average adult requires 8,700 kilojoules of food a day. That's 3.175 million kilojoules a year per adult. That's 20 quadrillion kilojoules of food a year to feed the world's population, the adult population. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds scary because it's a big number. So at our current trajectory, the earth will have more than 11 billion people by 2100, and the earth simply can't sustain that. So no, we shouldn't upload our brains to the cloud. We must upload our brains to the cloud. The earth can't sustain uh, that many people. It can sustain about seven or eight billion people. So we have to knock off about 25% of the population. You've seen with the rapidity uh, with which vaccines were developed that science can respond when there is a looming disaster. And there is a looming disaster. The population time bomb is ticking. And the solution, uploading our brains, take 50 years and older to the cloud. Easy peasy. So now you're wondering, how does this plan work? Well, simple. Up until 49, you're working on vegetable farms, server farms, wind farms, all of the farms. So Lyndon, so much green time before your screen time. Then on your 50th birthday, there's a big celebration as your old fashioned analog brain is retired and converted to a deluxe, digital, encrypted, redundantly backed up super brain to live on for all of forever. The whole operation too, it's carbon neutral. Okay, so the excess bodies are burned uh, to power the server farms being run by those under 50 within a circular economy. And because I said circular economy, you have, if you have a drink in your hand, you have to drink it. Because that's the rules, that's what you signed up for. It said in the free, in the little tiny print, circular economy, you drink. All right, now you're thinking, how horrible for our parents and our grandparents? What, what sort of Logan's run hellscape is he proposing? Listen. I'm just 12 years away from what I'm calling disestablishment, but I'm not worried, not in the slightest, because of two words, two simple words, unlimited internet, unlimited 
Do you know what that means? It means there's no limits. It means limitless. And we all know full well the trust that Australian people have in their internet service providers. So imagine this unlimited future uh, backed by the NBN. There's the promise of, sorry, I'm just helping the uh, negative team on this one. Uh, the, the promise of uploading our brains to the cloud where once you can travel in an instant, where you can hit a virtual sleep button and be guaranteed a perfect eight to 4,000 hours of sleep every night. Now the negative side, they're gonna tell you about the joys of physical touch and physical contact, but they have clearly never had their grandmother kiss them directly on the mouth. It's so wet, so wet. Now we romanticize these things, but do we really need them? I haven't seen my parents in over two years and given the opportunity, I'd be thrilled to meet them in the cloud. Frankly, we should have started doing this years ago. Just imagine how useful it would have been if we'd had Einstein's brain pumping out some more formulas or Steve Jobs leading us to the next digital revolution. Of course we should upload our brains to the cloud. The cloud is the future. The negative team, they wanna hold back progress. They wanna hold back society. They wanna hold back you. They bought into the Hollywood spin of what the future holds and it's always bad, but no one can predict the future. All we can do is embrace it. And so when the time comes to upload your brain to the cloud, and it will come, all 86 billion neurons translated into bits and bytes, I encourage you, the audience, the voters, to not be a Luddite, rather embrace the future and save the planet in the process. Thank you. Wait, Kelly, everyone. The uh, topic has just got darker and darker as the night has also got darker and darker. <laughs> uh, who knows what lies ahead in this, this debate? We're going to find out extremely shortly as we move to the third negative speaker uh, of this debate, Louisa Fitzharding. Now, Louisa is an award nominated actor, comedian, and grammar nerd. She is criminally punny which I have feelings about, but it's too late to act on them now. Uh, she recently hosted Lost the Plots, a literature game show uh, at the Melbourne Emerging Writers Festival. She appears regularly in uh, the much loved improvised comedy troupes, The Big Hoo Ha, Impromptunes, Spontaneous Broadway and The Sooth Players and completely improvised Shakespeare. Um, she did a whole bunch of Shakespeare and she is currently touring her solo show, Comma Sutra, which you should definitely all go and see. Please make some noise for our final debater tonight, Louisa Fitzharding. Hello, everyone. Uh, and uh, hello, uh, the esteemed audience, very esteemed adjudicator and uh, not quite as esteemed affirmative team. Um, uh, just before we get any um, questions about it, I just want to um, establish that yes, um, like Mrs. Frizzle from the Magical School Bush, I do have um, an outfit for every possible sci-fi topic. This one, of course, being covered in clouds. Um, now, the affirmative team seems here to think that uploading our minds to the cloud would be awesome, uh, just like the Matrix. Um, but I'm here to tell you that it would be terrible, just like the matrix revolutions. Um, but before I get into the main reason um, why we can't upload our brains to the cloud, I would just want to rebut a few points made by uh, the affirmative team. Um, now, we have uh, Matt Coffey clearly went first. Um, he said there's a bunch, bunch of sexy singles in his area. Uh, Matt, you don't need the cloud to tell you that. You can get them straight from Woolies. Um, we also had Rosa, who um, uh, wants us to download our brains into other bodies. Um, Rosa Zwire, more like Rosa why are you making these terrible arguments about a terrifying vision of the future? Um, look, she wants to live inside a dog and is expecting that she would still be able to run an Instagram account as a dog mathematician. Now, I'm just here to tell you that would not add up um, because we all know she would never be able to help anyone out with her homework because she would just eat it. Um, and then uh, we moved on to Wade. Um, Wade is, is somewhat correct in his um, Thanos-like vision that if we kill all the humans, we can potentially reverse climate change. Um, but there's one key reason why euthanizing everyone at the age of 50 would not work. 
um, and why essentially nobody would want to do that, which makes it very hard to, uh, to convince people. So um, seriously, we um, shouldn't be uploading our brains to the cloud. Um, and uh, even if we're um, able to accumulate all of the knowledge, um, we shouldn't anyway. Now, here's the reason, because if you make a copy of your brain, you don't magically transfer your consciousness to that copy. You are still you. You are still the first original you. Now, I want you to imagine something. Have a little thought experiment. So imagine that you have been offered the opportunity to upload your brain to the cloud. You have uh, saved up all of your money. Uh, you go to your appointment. Uh, you get inside a machine that is way more advanced than any MRI machine that we have today. So um, just like impossibly so. It would need to be so accurate and we do not have that technology. So anyway, um, I digress. You get your brain scanned and a copy is made and then uploaded to the cloud. And then what? You pay the bill, which is unlikely to be covered by Medicare, or if it is, the gap would be huge. And then you go home and you uh, think about what you're going to have for dinner. Uh, you've just spent all your money on uploading your brain to the cloud, so you probably shouldn't get Uber Eats tonight. Uh, you go home to your flat. Um, your cat has done a poo on the floor and your off-brand Roomba has smushed it all over the house. Uh, your partner calls, um, they've decided that they need some space and they're gonna go on an overseas trip without you. Um, you remind them that they're still not allowed to travel because yes, even in this far-flung future scenario, Melbourne is still in fucking lockdown. Um, they tell you that they don't care and that they're gonna go anyway. That's right, your partner has become a dirty anti-masker. And then when you sit down with your pasta that you've overcooked because you were stressed about your partner joining the alt-right, you discover that you can't access Elon Flix, which is of course the future version of Netflix because your payment method was declined because you spent all your money uploading your consciousness to the cloud. And all this, all this is still your life. You yourself don't actually get any benefit from having your brain uploaded to the cloud. You are still you. Yes, there is a copy of your consciousness floating off in some digital world, but your life essentially remains the same, except that now you're a fair bit poorer. So, so Matt said that he wanted to watch every episode of Neighbours, but it wouldn't be him watching Neighbours. It'd be his brain clone enjoying all the adventures of Toady and the gang. And this is the real reason that brain uploading just doesn't make any sense, because we don't stand to benefit from it. In fact, we stand to lose a huge amount. Um, now, I want you to have a think about your job, your unique skills and abilities that you yourself have built up over your lifetime. Uh, maybe you have really, you know, built a niche as um, Australia's favourite grammar comedian, for instance. That's just a kind of random hypothetical one that I picked out of no one, out of nowhere. Now, imagine that there's another person who's just walloped into existence who has your exact skill set and experience, but because their digital brain can process things faster than you, they're better. They're, they're funnier. They, they write shows in, in the blink of an eye and don't even have to take breaks because um, their fallible body um, gets a sore tummy if they consume too much dairy. They, they perform these shows online because Everything's online now anyway. And you are relegated to being Australia's second favourite grammar comedian, which just sounds horrible. And think of, think of the jealousy as well. Like what if, your, what if your brain clone cured cancer and then for the rest of the li your life you have to know that you could have cured cancer if you'd been less lazy? I mean, ca cancer, yes, would be cured, but at what cost, you know? So what you've essentially done here is you've created a clone of yourself. And we've seen in plenty of 90s comedy movies just how fraught that can be. It's just, it's not going to make it any easier for you to romance Andy McDowell. And since that clone is digital as well, you miss out on the best part of having a clone, which is obviously having sex with yourself. That's right, this person will be your doppelganger, but you will never experience 
the unique joys of having a doppelbanger. So Wade argues that we should all do this when we hit 50. 50? That is so young. Oh my goodness. I just don't think we're going to be able to convince people to take that step in their life where they essentially are euthanized uh, and they, you know, have someone else live on their life for them. Um, when we can stay here on this earth, um, put these uh, companies to task and hopefully reverse climate change by ourselves, fingers crossed. crossed. Um, now, um, in conclusion, I would implore you all to use your brain and vote for the negative team. As Lyndon says, we don't want, don't we want less screen time and more green time, uh, especially when we can't trust these unreliable or, um, dare I say, nebulous clouds. And uh, as Angus says, the internet is terrible and extremely hackable and no one likes fake Ray-Bans anyway. So please don't create a digital clone who's gonna drain your money, steal your life and ruin your chances with Andy McDowell forever. Thank you, Atlanta. Round of applause, Louise Pittarding. Well, uh, friends, that uh, brings us to the end of the debate. Um, now, it, there's a lot has been laid out there this evening. We've heard a lot of wild and incredible and absolutely terrifying <laughs> ideas about what might eventuate if uh, machine and man were to merge into one. Um, I will. Uh, it's it, lots happened, so I'm going to quickly summarise a, a bit of what I managed to glean as what happened this evening. Um, now, Matt Coffey kicked off. Uh, he used his own um, lacklustre performance as evidence that he would be better as part of a computer, which was a, a unique approach to winning a debate. Um, and he dropped some horrifying details about the sheer quantity of neighbours that exists in the world. Um, Matt uh, was followed by Lyndon, who gave us a very healthy fear of real clouds, which we will carry with us uh, every time we're outside from this moment on. Uh, and she has comprehensively convinced me never to have a baby. Uh, Rosa uh, should never be given funds to do anything scientific because it is truly <laughs> terrifying what she is capable of cooking up with a very short period of time and zero ethics approval. Um, Angus ruined sex for everybody uh, and also dogs. So that was his contribution. Um, Wade asked us to imagine sex without moving parts, which did help me understand what I have been doing wrong all this time. Um, yes, and he did pre <laughs> present the argument that if we conducted genocide, that could prevent climate change, despite the fact that climate change, preventing climate change, has, the main driver of humanity has been so climate change doesn't cause genocide um, that seemed like a pertinent step to have missed. And then Louisa showed us an improvised slideshow, which is not something I have ever seen before. <laughs> it was very impressive um, and uh, got some neuroses off her chest. So that, that brings us up to now. Um, before we go to uh, a bit of an audience vote, if we can call that, um, I've been half keeping an eye on the chat. There's a lot about raspberry Tim Tams and people yelling at each other, but I've mainly just been ignoring it as I promised I would do. Um, I do want to throw quickly to the debaters if there's anything that you would like to uh, spruik while we've got our audience still with us. Um, maybe Louisa, did you want to start? Yes, uh, I had a series of my grammatical musical comedy show, Comma Sutra, uh, that uh, has been delayed due to the Melbourne lockdown. Um, but if you head to my uh, Facebook, which I'll pop in the chat, you can follow and find out um, when the next seasons will happen. Um, so, yeah, keep an eye out. Thank you, Louisa. Wade, did you have anything? Yeah, we've got we've got two more nerd nights this year. The next one is on September 15th. It's at Howler in Brunswick, and we're just uh, watching uh, with bated breath, hoping it will go through. We've had three other ones this year, and we've managed to somehow get them in between lockdowns, so maybe it's the magic. Um, so fingers crossed we'll be able to see you uh, at Howler in Brunswick on the 15th of September. 
Thank you so much, Wade. I'm looking very quickly. Rosa, Lyndon, Matt, Ang Angus, do you have anything you wanted to spruik? I'm doing some stand-up shows at uh, Comedy Republic in uh, Melbourne on the 24th, if the lockdown's ended by then, 24th of September. And uh, if you check my Twitter, there's some short stories online if you'd like to read them. Thanks. Thank you, Angus. Matt, you've got something? Yeah, I, uh, uh, we saw a bit of a teaser at the start for Science Gallery Melbourne's mental exhibition. Fingers crossed we're opening soon. Uh, please come and check it out. Keep your eyes peeled uh, on our website. I work on the gallery floor. Come in, say hello. We have some great exhibits, uh, some super cool things to explore. Thank you so much, Matt. Have I forgotten anyone? Speak yeah, Rosa, what have you got? Um, I just wanted to, to resolve a question that was asked in the chat and it was, what is the name of um, this one over here? Um, that's Paul. Paul works with us at ScienceWorks. And when I uh, came to work from home, um, Paul came to work from home with me. So he's been doing some hard, hard days around the kitchen table working from ScienceWorks. Um, it's National Science Week. So there are like lots and lots of science events happening um like from this weekend to the next weekend and museums victoria is putting on a couple of science events that are online and very interesting so if you're interested there are some on um climate stuff which is very topical right now and clearly a at, at the forefront of our minds so um if you're interested check out the museums victoria website and scienceworks has lots of good stuff too nothing online in the immediate future but in september we're doing astro hour so if you like stars and planets and stuff uh, and want to learn about space travel come along that was a compelling pitch there thank you rosa i am now looking at the chat window and it is fairly horrifying in there um, if you wanted to type in the chat now if you thought the affirmative or the negative were the superior team um, this is the time to go uh, see who's got more people <laughs> this is upsetting it's actually quite upsetting to watch uh, i don't know why this i thought this was going to work i just feel like i'm about <laughs> to have some sort of epileptic fit <laughs> someone said raise hand is better uh this is hilarious um yeah it probably is better i don't know you to see that the chat was just going so fast um i can count i'm not gonna count but I am glad that we're now not discussing Rosebery, Ro was it Raspberry Tim Tams? But, but Rose does have a, uh, Rosa does have a, uh, a math background. And so you're able to extrapolate based on what you're seeing in the chat uh, quickly in your head, right? Rosa, a quick formula. And you know that the affirmatives took it, right? <laughs> um, yes, I have uh, speed reading abilities and um, I'm just doing quick tally and I'm, pr I'm pretty sure we have it. <laughs> So, <laughs> this is a honest. science debate, not a maths debate. <laughs> yeah, no. Wait, so you want to argue whether maths is a science? No, that's. I like that somebody who's out there is counting them. Someone said 30 for the affirmative, 30 for 35 for the negative. I'm Stand pretty sure steam, I agree. Stand, steam, steam, steam. Yes, yes, yes. I am never doing this again. It's horrifying. <laughs> um, look, I'm going to close the chat window because I, I much prefer audiences who sit in the dark and laugh at the appropriate time um mainly because they don't come up with better punchlines to our jokes than than we do uh it's been quite an illuminating evening i am going to use my dictator skills um to declare tonight's debate the winners of tonight's debate i'm gonna give it to the negative yeah <laughs> You can, if you disagree with my ruling, you can bring it up in the chat and I, as, as the host, can just not read the chat. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. Can I have a round of applause wherever you are for all of our amazing debaters tonight? You've all been such an incredible, it's been such a pleasure. Thank you uh, for striving through the adversity of a lockdown to be part of tonight and sharing all of your neuroses in the form of jokes. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. Before everyone heads off, uh, I just want to do a huge thank you to Science Gallery Melbourne for making tonight's event happen. Um, if you want to see mental exhibition, as Matt mentioned, you can jump on melbourne.sciencegallery.com to, I think you book yourself in to go into the exhibition now. I've had a sneak preview of some of the exhibitions and they're really, 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 really 
really awesome. Um, far less terrifying than anything that Rosa or Wade came up with. So please check it out. And uh, if you've had a nice evening and you'd like to see another sci fight when we talk about whether or not we should put our brains in a blender um, or whether or not Rosa should be a dog, uh, please jump on scifight.com.au and sign up to our newsletter. It's been an absolute pleasure, I think, being your host this evening. So thank you for joining us and good night, everybody. Yay, Atlanta as well. Yay. <laughs>